Hello YouTube and welcome to the next root learning video. On today's video we're going to be covering the Weirdale and Teasdale network which is a brand new, well I would say root, but it is a network which was released today. So on today's journey we're going to be travelling in a class 111 in BR Green livery between Barnard Castle and Bishop Auckland. This is a distance of around 15 and a quarter miles, and along the way we will be calling at Cockfield Fell, Evenwood, West Auckland, and finally Bishop Auckland. This is indeed a scenario which comes with the route, however what I've done is I've swapped out the class 101 which comes with the route with a class 111 DMU, simply because I don't like the default sounds that you get with the class 101, and I much prefer it with the Armstrong Powerhouse sound pack, which isn't yet applied to the new class 101 which comes with this route. The Class 111 has featured in two of my previous videos which were recorded on the Western Lines of Scotland route. The Class 111 was in service between 1957 and 1989 and was manufactured by Metro Camel between 1957 and 1960. A total of 23 of these trains were built with either two or three coaches per unit. There is a maximum speed of 70 miles per hour, though the maximum permitted speed on our journey today will be 45 miles per hour. And each coach weighs, well the power cars weigh 33 tonnes, with the trailer cars weighing 25 tonnes. And so there is one power car and one trailer car per unit. There is a power output of 180 horsepower per power car. Once in the cab of the Class 111, the first thing that we need to do is put the reversing handle into the forward position, which I've just done now, and then we need to move the gear handle to the position for gear 1. Now just to say this operates differently when you've got the Armstrong Powerhouse sound pack installed versus the default, and so what I need to do now is press Shift and D, and that will move the gear lever all of the way up to the uh, gear 1 position. So you have to hold down shift and D or it will step through the gears going from 4 through to 1. And then when driving, what we'll do is we will cut off the power once we reach a certain speed. So say to change from gear 1 to gear 2. When we're doing around 13 to 14 miles per hour, I will cut the power off on the power handle, which is just to our left here, which has four notches on it. And then you'll see we've got a tachometer that says engine RPM, so that needle will climb. When changing gear, we have to shut off the power until the engine RPM needle has fallen to the bottom, wait a second or two, then shift up in gear and reapply power like that. Although in Train Simulator it will allow you to change the gear without cutting off the power, you should never do that in reality. Another thing to also mention is that whenever you are coasting, no matter what speed you're doing, you should always shift up to gear 4. So just in front of us here is the speedometer, which is pretty self-explanatory. And we have a two-tone horn, courtesy of Armstrong Powerhouse. And then finally over here we have the vacuum brake lever and vacuum brake gauge. So this operates very much like the brakes on a steam locomotive. If I now move this to the released position, you'll see the needle, the left hand needle on the left hand gauge there will start to climb, which it is doing now. If I now want to hold the brakes at that certain position, I then move the handle back to the hold position and you'll see the needle has stopped climbing. When the brakes are fully released, the needle will climb all the way to, I think it's 21 on this gauge. To, to apply the brakes, what the handle does, it does not control how hard you apply them, but how quickly they apply. So if I move this to the release position now, and say we want to apply a half brake force, so down to 10 on the brake gauge, I'll then move the brake handle, and you can see the needle uh, falling now. If I move it further, it will fall quicker. And then you need to then move the handle back to the hold position to hold the brakes at that force. Finally, just over here, we have a wheel. Um, it's certainly not a steering wheel. This is the handbrake for this unit. And now that we've had a quick look around the cab, and I think I've gone through the basic principles, it's now time to depart.
Departing Barnard Castle, the starting speed limit is 20 miles per hour, and we've got around seven and a third miles to go to the next stop, which is Cockfield Fell. And so as we're now approaching 15 miles per hour, I've just cut the power, and I'm now stepping up to gear two, and I'm now going to increase the power once again until we get to 20 miles per hour. Once we get to 20, which we are doing now, I'm going to shut off the power completely, wait a couple of seconds, and now I need to step up to gear four for a moment until we're able to accelerate further. In a moment, the speed limit will be going up to 45 miles per hour. Once it does, I need to step back down to gear two and then apply power to start accelerating. And so you can see we're now passing the 45 boards. So I've just stepped down to gear two now. And I'm now giving us some power to start accelerating. Once we reach around 27 to 28 miles per hour, at that point, I'm then going to cut the power back and allow the tachometer to fall to zero before then stepping up to gear three. And so as you can see, we're now doing around 26 to 27 miles per hour. I've just pulled the power handle back to idle tachometer's fallen, I'm now stepping up to gear 3 and increasing the power once again. At this point we are going uphill on a 1 in 75 gradient which is affecting our ability to accelerate. And as we get to around 38 miles per hour now, I'm shutting off the power once again, ready to step up the gear. At this large arch overbridge just here, we've got just half a mile to go to a speed reduction down to 15 miles per hour. So I have stepped up to gear four, but I'm not increasing the power and I'm allowing the train to gradually coast down in speed. Just after we've passed the next distance signal coming up, and then going to apply light to medium brakes to bring our speed down towards the upcoming 15 limit. The 15 limit is purely for crossing tracks just here and then it will be going back up once again. So as you can see I have reduced the brake pressure to 15 on the brake gauge. In fact we're probably slowing down a little too early here. So I'm just going to allow the train to continue to coast for a moment. I think we can see the point coming up just ahead where we're going to be crossing with the 15 limit which is just after the home signal that you can see coming up now. And so we are now down to 15 in time, possibly slightly too early. And you can see where we're just about to cross tracks to the right hand side. And I'm going to pull the gear back down to gear one now and give us some power just to try and ensure that we don't lose too much speed here. As you can see, just after we've crossed this point to the right, the speed limit is then going up to 45 miles per hour. Now that we've brought our speed back up towards 15, I'm just going to cut the power ready to change up to gear two and start accelerating towards the 45 speed limit. As we're now doing around 26 to 27, I'm pulling the power back once again. In a moment, we'll be stepping up to gear three, which I'm going to do now. And that will bring us up to around 38, where I'll then step up to gear four. On level or uphill gradients in this train, it's actually very easy to maintain a 45 mile per hour speed limit. If you just set it into gear four and go with notch two on the power, that should maintain us at around 45 miles per hour. I think it'll be around 44 and a half actually. So now that we've reached that speed, I'm just changing up to gear four. And I'm just gonna leave the power handle now in notch two, and that should maintain us at roughly 45 until we experience some gradient changes, which there will be along this section of route. So what I'm looking out for now is a section where we're going to start going downhill on a gradient of one in 125, at which point I'm going to need to idle the power and use just a very, very light amount of braking to ensure that we don't break the speed limit.
So with route learning videos, the next videos that will be coming up soon, part two of the Kyle line will definitely be one which I'm hoping to get up by the end of this weekend if possible. And I think I'd also like to do another journey on this route. I have to say my, my first impressions of this, it's a very, very good add-on. The scenery is great. It's very well put together. And of course, this is a large network of routes rather than just one A to B route. So it has a lot more scenario potential and indeed for this channel, a lot more video potential. So very much like the South London network, there's going to be quite a number of different journeys which I would like to record here. There is one uh, which comes with the route in a class 25 where you drive from Darlington to Durham. I was originally going to have that as my first video, but you end up with some thick fog on the journey, and I just didn't think that a journey with thick fog where you can't see a lot was a very good introduction to this route, which is why I've picked this journey in clear weather. In fact, this scenario was set to rainy weather, so I did change the weather so that we'd have sun on the journey, just to try and ensure that we can uh, get a really great view of the awesome scenery in this area. We are now going downhill at 1 in 125, so I have idled the power. I'm just using a low amount of braking at this point to try and control our speed. It looks like we're losing a little bit too much, however. So I'm releasing the brakes once again, and I'm going to allow us to coast back up towards 45. There's one thing you'll notice along this section, it's that we have a long distance between any signals at all. And I believe, in fact, the next signal is quite close to our next stop. now just using some very light braking once again for speed control and what I'm looking out for now is a section where the gradient will be leveling out and at that point I'm then going to release the brakes and go back into notch two of power to try and maintain our speed it looks like the gradient change is just coming up just ahead if you can see that there and so I believe we are now back on a level gradient at this point. So I've just released the brakes and I'm going back into notch two of power to maintain us at around 45 miles per hour. The next gradient change will be an increase in the gradient going uphill at one in 93. Once we reach that gradient change, we've then got around two and a quarter miles to go to our next stop. So in addition to more journeys on this route and the Kyle line, I've got a number of return journeys that I'm hoping to cover soon for routes that I previously covered. I'd also like to start thinking about making another American route for my American subscribers and possibly wanting to cover the Marias Pass in the Amtrak Empire Builder. I think that that route has great scenery and a great variety of speed limits and it's just quite an interesting route to drive. So that's one that I'm quite keen to cover quite soon in the future. I'd also like to make another German video at some point. I did buy a number of German trains in the Steam sale which has just gone. So I'm hoping to make one or two more German videos, possibly in some older locos rather than in any more modern ICE trains. As you can see, our current power and gear settings are maintaining our speed pretty well. And I believe we can now see the gradient change just here where we're going to start going uphill at one in 93. So as I said, at this point, we've now got two and a quarter miles to our next stop. The next gradient change will be changing to a downhill gradient at one in 75. Once we start going down at one in 75, I am then going to need to cut the power and use the brakes to control our speed on the descent towards Cockfield Fell.
believe we can now see the next gradient change just coming up where we're going to start going downhill. So in a moment I'm going to cut back on the power and start using the brakes for speed control. I am now idling the power and I'm just going to keep an eye on the speedometer just to see what happens here. What we're looking out for now is the next distance signal. Once we've reached that signal, we've then got three quarters of a mile to go to our stop. I'm actually not sure that we're on the downhill section yet, as I've noticed we have just lost a little bit of speed there. And we've dropped down to 40 miles per hour, so I'm just increasing the power momentarily to bring our speed back up towards 45. And in fact you can now see that there is a gradient change about to happen, so I believe it is at this point now we're starting to go downhill, so I'm idling the power once again. I'm just going to use a small amount of braking now to try and control our speed. As you can see we're now about to pass the distance signal. So we've now got three quarters of a mile to go to our stop. And what I'm looking out for now is the next signal, which I believe is a home and distance signal on the same gantry. And at that point, we've got just a third of a mile to go. And I will then be braking to between five and 10 on the brake gauge. Normally I try not to go below 10, but when you are going downhill, you do generally need, need to use the brakes a bit harder than you would do normally. As you can see, we're now passing the home and distance signal, so I am now applying the brakes harder. I'm initially gonna bring us down to around five there, and now I'm gonna hold us at that. And I will release the brakes as we get closer to our stop. I don't want to enter the platform at any faster than 20 miles per hour. I would say that closer to 15 is probably preferable, as we are only in a two coach train. I am now going to release the brakes a bit and we're entering the platform at just around 15 miles per hour now. I want to stop just beyond this platform sign you can now see on the left hand side there. Just increase the braking a little and we should be stopping in about the right place. Departing Cockfield Fell, the starting speed limit is 45 miles per hour and we've got just under two and a half miles to go to the next stop, which is Evenwood. It could potentially be pronounced Evanwood, but looking at the spelling, I believe it's more likely to be Evenwood than Evanwood. Shortly after the station we're going to be going downhill at 1 in 75 so I am going to need to keep an eye on our speed just to make sure that we don't break the speed limit. So what I'm going to do at the point where we change to gear 4 in a moment, instead of applying power once I've changed the gears, I'm now just going to change to gear 4 and allow the train to coast without adding any power as we will slowly increase in speed. The gradient will then be shallowing shortly to down at 1 in 132 for a short distance. And then in a little while we're going to get a very steep downhill gradient of between 1 in 27 and 1 in 54. 1 in 27, I think to my American subscribers that is around a 4% grade, which is I'm sure as you know is very very steep for a train. So at the moment we're roughly maintaining 45 miles per hour and then just after that as we start to go downhill in a second I'm then going to have to apply the brakes pretty hard to try and control our speed. In fact I'm going to have to go to below 15 on the brake gauge and you can see the very steep gradient change just here now. So the brakes are now being applied and I'm holding them at around 13 on the brake gauge 
which should hopefully prevent us from going above 45 miles per hour. And as you can see just ahead, the gradient is shallowing a bit. And so as I mentioned, it is going to be shallowing to one in 54. And now I'm just going to reduce the brakes a little to around 17 to 18 on the brake gauge and just keep an eye on the speedometer to make sure that we're not speeding up. We're now approaching the next distance signal and at this point we've now got three quarters of a mile to go to Evenwood. I am going to apply the brakes for our stop at the next signal which we pass, aiming to enter the platform at no faster than 15 miles per hour and stopping roughly halfway along the platform. As you can see we're now approaching the next signal so I am now going to start applying the brakes. I've just gone to between 5 and 10 on the brake gauge mainly because we are going downhill quite steeply and I do want to ensure that we slow down quick enough. Although the gradient is levelling out a bit here. You can now see the station just coming up with the platform on the left hand side there. I've just increased the braking a bit more as I feel we're possibly coming in a little too quick. And as I said, I didn't really want to enter the platform at any faster than 15 miles per hour, which we're now going to do. So now let's release the braking a bit. And just bring our speed down more gently to a stop. In fact, we're not slowing down as quickly as I was expecting, so I just had to reapply the brakes for a moment there. And I've just reduced them as we came to a smoother stop. Departing Evenwood, the starting speed limit is 45 miles per hour and we've got around two and a half miles to go to the next stop, which is West Auckland. And so now once again, as we've reached around 15 miles per hour, I'm stepping up into gear two. Initially departing the station, we are going downhill on a gradient of 1 in 110 and this will be steepening to down 1 in 64. Once again, as we reach the point to change up to gear four, I'm just going to cut the power off, change up to gear four, but not apply any power and allow the train to coast up towards the speed limit. At this point, I do now need to use the brakes for speed control. And what I'm looking out for along here is a warning for an upcoming 20 mile per hour speed restriction as we cross a junction to the left. The 20 warning is one third of a mile from the limit itself and we're just passing the 20 warning now and now you can see a distance signal coming up just after and so I'm going to apply the brakes now at this distance signal to try and bring our speed down in time. Just reducing the brakes a bit now as I feel we're slowing down just a little too quick and you can see the junction just coming up now. And so the speed limit has now dropped to 20 miles per hour just as we cross this junction and around this curve to the right. I believe we are still going downhill, so this will still cause us to accelerate a little. I'm keeping an eye on the speedometer for that, though it does look like our speed is slowly crawling upwards. The speed limit at this point is now going back up to 45 miles per hour. What I'm going to do is I'm going to step down in the gears to gear two, just because we've slowed down a bit too much. 
So yeah, just after crossing the point, the speed limit then does go up to 45, and we have no speed board to tell us of that, so you already need to know that when driving on this journey. So we're now changing back up to gear three to continue to accelerate. I believe that the gradient at this point is now level. And so we're now changing up to gear four and I'm just gonna put this into notch two power which should pretty much maintain our speed. At the next distance signal which we will pass, we've then got around a third of a mile to go to a speed reduction down to 25 miles per hour. So I'm just looking out for that distance signal now. I believe this is it just coming up. So as we pass this distance signal, I'm now going to idle the power and start applying the brakes to bring our speed down towards 25. And now I'm just gonna hold our braking at around 10. I think we've just gone slightly below 10 there, so I'm just gonna release the brakes very slightly. And we should be slowing down about right for the upcoming 25 minutes. So our speed is now down to 25 and the speed limit is also dropping to 25 as you can see just here and West Auckland platform is just coming up so I'm just going to apply the brakes once again to bring our speed down and we're entering the platform at just below 20 miles per hour at this point I'm aiming to stop roughly halfway along the platform so just past this brown building on the right hand side there and now we should be stopped in about the right place at this point. Departing from West Auckland, the starting speed limit is 25 miles per hour and very quickly going up to 45 miles per hour. And at this point, we've got just under three miles to go to the final stop for this journey, which is Bishop Auckland. I believe that we are currently on a level gradient, so this time we are going to need to use power to try and maintain us at 45 miles per hour rather than coasting up to 45. So what's coming up soon is a speed drop down to 25 miles per hour, which I'm looking out for. And so as we travel along here, I'm going to be looking for some buffer stops on the left hand side. And just after we pass them, I'm going to be braking for the upcoming 25 speed limit. At these signals here with the home and distance signal, we've now got half a mile to go to the upcoming 25 limit. And you can now see the buffer stops just coming up there on the left hand side so I am now applying the brakes and we're between 5 and 10 on the brake gauge at present I'm just going to reduce that to 10 now and we should be slowing down about right for the upcoming 25 minutes
So we're now doing around 25 miles per hour as we cross this point to the left. The speed limit is going back up to 45 miles per hour just after this junction here. So I'm just going to step down one to gear three at this point and now I'm going to start increasing the power once again. What I'm looking out for along here now is a warning for a speed drop down to 30 miles per hour, which should be coming up very shortly. And at the distance signal just after that, we've then got around a third of a mile to go to the 30 limit. So we're currently back into gear four and notch two power to try and maintain our speed. It looks like the 30 warning is just coming up now and you can see the distance signal immediately after it indicating a third of a mile from the limit. I'm going to start braking for that 30 limit in a moment so I'm just idling the power now and now I'm just going to start applying the brakes as we reach this underbridge here and I'm trying to hold the brakes at 10 on the brake gauge which should slow us down about right. I'm now releasing the brakes as we're now down to 30 miles per hour and the 30 mile per hour limit will be coming into force just after these signals here. Once we pass the 30 board we've then got a third of a mile to go to the next speed reduction which is a reduction down to 15 miles per hour and so I'm going to be braking for the 15 limit on the next level crossing which will be coming up in a moment. can now see we're crossing the level crossing and I'm applying the brakes to bring us down towards 15. In fact I think we're slowing down just slightly too early there so I've released the brakes momentarily while we're doing 20 and I'm looking out for the 15 speed board which should be coming up at any moment. You can now see the speed board just coming up so I've just applied the brakes once again and now that we're doing 15, I have released the brakes. I'm just going to now allow the train to coast into Bishop Auckland Station. Bishop Auckland Station looks very different today to what it did back when this route was modelled or the era, that, the era that this route was modelled in and it has featured in a previous video where I covered the Just Trains Bishop Auckland to Darlington route. That is the journey I would like to cover on this add-on at some point in another video but in the alternate direction so you can just really see the difference um, between the Just Trains route and this Dovetail Games version which is based in a much older time period. So I'm aiming to stop before the end of the platform, just as we reach these windows now coming up on the left hand side. We should now be stopped in about the right place. Thank you very, very much for watching. I really do hope that you've enjoyed the video. Please don't forget that you can find me on Facebook for the latest updates, the link of which is in the description of this video. And if you value the work that I do and would like to financially support me towards the cost of new DLC or equipment, then please visit my Patreon page for further information. Again, the link of that is in the description of this video. Once again, thank you for watching.